Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to The NeverEnding Story. So, I'm going to say right off the bat, this is not a donation reward. Um, you might have thought it was initially, but honestly, I'm sick of waiting. <laughs> I, I've had this on my list of like uh, donation reward ideas that I keep on Discord and everything. Um, and I, I've been hoping someone would choose it, and no one has chosen for me to react to this, and I'm sad. Um, because I grew up knowing about this movie, but I've never seen it, and I don't really know exactly what the plot is or anything. I know like a few like little things here and there, um, which I'll talk about, but I've been wanting to see this movie since season three of Stranger Things. Um, I'm not even kidding you. In, in, in Stranger Things, Dustin and his girlfriend, whose name I cannot think, Susie, Susie, that's her name. Dustin and Susie sing the theme song, which I had never heard before that point. I, I, I'm listening to the theme song, like, in that episode of Stranger Things, and it's like, oh, this is a pretty good song. What is this? And then they, and then it drops with the line, the never-ending story. It's like, oh, <laughs> this is from that? And it's like, this song sounds really fucking epic and cool and awesome. And it's like, okay. I'm in. <laughs> I, I, I want to see this now. Because, uh, again, before that, it's like it's just not something that was really on my radar. Um, I had heard about it forever. It's just not something that I was invested in checking out. That's why I never did. Um, and so then, last night, was America's Got Talent. And one of the contestants, the freckled Zelda, who is this singer and ocarinist, uh, she dresses up like in a Zelda fairy costume and everything and plays an ocarina during her performances as well. Um, she did a cover of the Never Ending Story song for her performance. And I, I'm, I'm not going to get into all of it here because I could rant about that for a while, but the judges didn't like it. I thought it was one of, if not the best performance of the night. I think the judges are high, but that's the case plenty often, surprisingly enough. Um, they like animal acts, after all, and think animal acts are worthy of a million dollars and going to Vegas, which they're not. But again, not going to get into all of that ranting now. But yeah, um, I saw that act, and I loved that act. On America's Got Talent last night and so I decided you know what I'm not waiting anymore I don't know if anyone will ever request this I, I put it on that list for a reason that list of suggestions and all is like these are movies I want you to request people <laughs> that's the point of the list <laughs> Um, and mind you, anyone can still request whatever they want. If you're, if you're doing a donation reward, it's still completely your choice. But I'm just saying, it's like, I've been waiting for that. And it's like, it just hasn't come. So I'm just like, you know what? Fuck it. We're just doing it. We're just going to record this. Uh, the movie's about an hour and a half, so it's not that big of a deal. I'm pretty ahead in other recordings, so it's not taking up time I need for other stuff. Um... So, so there's no real issue with doing an extra movie reaction this week. Uh, so there might be three movies this week. We already did one of them um, with Cujo. Now we're doing this. And there might be another one at the end of the week, too. So kind of getting spoiled with movie reactions this week. So what do I know about this film? Okay, so 
I know it's in, it involves puppets, kind of like Labyrinth or Dark Crystal or anything like that. I don't know if it's Jim Henson or not, but I know there's puppets. I know this is the movie with the, I think it's called The Luck Dragon. Um, I, I, I think it might have an actual name, but I don't know. <laughs> um, it, it's this white, fluffy, like, dragon, um, that is inspired, that inspired the design of the Pokemon, um, Drampa, who is one of the most underrated Pokemon, in my opinion. Um, especially just in terms of design, Drampa's fucking adorable. <laughs> um... I obviously know the theme song. I, I've heard it in Stranger Things. I've heard it uh, on America's Got Talent last night. So I know the theme song. And I think it's it's like Labyrinth in the fact that uh, like a kid or something is like transported to this world. Um, and has to like try to figure out how to get out and get back and everything. I, I think it's sort of like that. Um, I, I guess you could basically say an isekai. <laughs> Um, but otherwise I don't, like, n know anything offhand. There might be some stuff that I've heard of and maybe even seen screenshots or something else before and just don't remember. It's possible. Um, but I don't know. Um, but yeah, I I'm definitely very interested to see what this is about. Because, I, I mean, I've heard good things about it. I've heard people really like this film. Um, I wasn't the biggest fan of Labyrinth. Like, I, I thought there were some issues with it, and it wasn't as amazing as people claimed, basically. Um, not that it was bad by any means. And I, I want to, as always mentioned, these are just my thoughts. If you love Labyrinth, that's awesome. That's great. But... Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping this is better. Because honestly, for me, just personally, Labyrinth was carried by David Bowie. If it wasn't for David Bowie, Labyrinth would just not have been good. Um, It wouldn't have been terrible, but it just wouldn't have been good. Uh, so I'm hoping this is better than that. Um, I'm not, I'm not too worried about the puppetry. That, that can go either way really as long as the story and characters are engaging um as long as i'm invested in what's going on that's what's more important to me um but we'll see we will see uh so uh we're gonna get right on with this and hope for the best so when the screen fades to black pause this redirect and go to the description below Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black, it fades back in. Everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts, and will contain spoilers to the movie. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So I wanted to look up some stuff in between, uh recording the reaction and these afterthoughts and i found out that apparently this movie only adapts the first half of the book that this is based on and that the second movie there's apparently a second and a third film um the second movie actually adapts the rest of the book so there's more to this story however based on just the this film itself it kind of has a conclusive ending and i don't know where it would go from here like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff with, like, Bastion's uh, real life that you're, like, kind of wondering about after that. And, like, wondering, like, okay, did he join the swimming team uh, that his father was pushing him to do? Um, has he gotten less depressed, I, I guess you could say? Has he, uh, about his mother's death and... Has things been going better? Have things been going better for him in school and stuff? It's just all these questions. But I don't think that was entirely necessary to tell at the same time. While it would have been nice to find out, I think that we got all the answers that we did truly need. 
And with that being said, this was by no means like an amazing film. It, it, it had its issues. There was definitely some pacing issues. It, it seemed to want to do a lot for an hour and a half runtime. Um, and it, it just, it, it was running into this problem of it's like there's just too much and it's rushing through a lot of it. Where it feels like it's like, oh, Atreyu is going from set piece to set piece with very little connecting it. Um, but that would be my only real issue with this. Because in terms of just at least pure enjoyability, this was magical. This was an absolutely magical adventure. And while, again, not everything, like, seemed to fit properly, while not everything was paced properly, um, I still enjoyed it for what it was. A story about a kid who has lost hope, a kid who has lost <laughs> his ability to dream and finding that again through a book where he becomes part of the story not just in a figurative sense but literally through some form of magic uh and connection even we as the viewers of this film l like literally become part of the story um that like honestly wowed me when that came up uh, by the end with uh, with Moonchild talking about that uh, and basically like connecting it's like, oh, we're all a story for Bastion and Bastion's a story for others. And it's like, wait, what? <laughs> You're getting very intensely meta and fourth wall breaky here. And it's like, I was not expecting that, but I kind of love it because it's like, it's, it's the idea of the story about finding your hopes and dreams again, about being able to believe again after pain, after suffering. Because we see that's Bastion's entire thing. His mother died and it's affected him. He's, he's tuning things out. He's not doing well in school. He's he's not doing well at all and through reading this story through reading this book he get he connects to it so hard that it allows him to again to hope and dream once again to believe again to find that ability to move on and the story itself reflects this Despite everything that he tried to do, Atreyu failed to save Fantasia. Fantasia was completely and utterly destroyed by the nothing. Reflecting that no matter what Bastion could try to do, he couldn't stop his mother from dying. But, as Bastion became a part of the story, restoring those hopes and dreams is reflected as a choice. Something that you need to believe in. Something that you need to actively do. You need to be able to say, I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to start a new Fantasia, a new world, and make it as best as I can, make it better than the last. The themes of depression, trauma, death, of life, hope, and dreams really shine in this film. And as someone who has dealt with depression, as someone who's dealt with losing family members, like, I get it. It definitely hit a chord for me. And it is hard to come back from that. 
to find that hope again. But you have to find something that that brings you joy, that can help you escape from the sadness that will swallow you up like Atax in the swamp. Just like any emotion, sorrow is fleeting. And you should always try your best and you should always do your best to be able to find your way out of it. Find the things that bring you happiness. Find the things that keep you going. For me, a lot of that revolves around animation, this channel, just enjoying media in general. I mean, it was media, it was My Little Pony that saved me from depression and suicide in 2013. And becoming so invested in it since has helped keep me from that depression truly coming back in full force. And there's still been moments since then where I've where I've been sinking, where I've felt that pain and that sorrow. But through these things, I've, I've been able to pull myself back out. I've been able to find something worth living for. As, and it may sound ridiculous to some people to say like, oh, you, you, the thing you find worth living for is cartoons and shit video games it's like that's shallow and stupid it's like can't you find people worth living for it's like everyone finds different things that help them re stay happy that help them keep a positive outlook on life for some people it is other people it's family it's friends and for some people it's it's things like video games or shows or comics or books or whatever else. Some people find themselves immersed in those worlds and it keeps them it keeps them positive. It keeps them hoping and dreaming. Some people find peace in those kinds of things. It doesn't have to always be family and friends and stuff. It can be media. It can be a pet. It can be it can be food or anything else. It's different for different people. And we have to acknowledge that. Um, but yeah, outside of the pacing of this film, the story itself was really good. I actually was really into the story about this world being consumed by darkness, by the nothing, and this brave young hero who is initially looked down upon because of his age coming to save it by doing anything and everything possible, going through all these trials and tribulations. I think that's a fantastic idea. And I think the story itself and, and the specifics of it were good. Again, the pacing was my only issue with that. Um, the acting was what it needed to be. It, it, I wouldn't call any of the acting in this phenomenal by any means. Um, like, this was not the best acting you could get. <laughs> but for what this story was and for what it was trying to convey, it worked. I, I, I think it worked. Uh, the puppetry was was good. It was, it, I have no issue with any of that. Um, the soundtrack, though, that was one of the true highlights of this film. Um, even outside of just the main theme... The soundtrack really sold every scene. It made this feel like a magical, beautiful fantasy land filled with all kinds of diverse and interesting creatures and peoples. It was genuinely really immersive. Um, the sets 
were great. I, I love the different, uh, again, variety and di diverseness of the sets and the designs of the characters. Um, I don't know how accurate the designs of everything are to the original book, like how it's described in the book or whatnot, but I, I really like that. Um, and yeah, I just, I just think this was a very enjoyable film. Um, I, I feel like it just, it really properly handled the combination of real life issues and this quaint fantasy world. It blended it well and made it believable. And the way that the, the issue of the fantasy world being engulfed by this nothing is a very clear representation of the sorrow, of the depression, of the darkness within Bastion's heart, and how it just connects to that idea of, like, fantasy is a reflection of our emotions, of our lives, of our experiences. We use fantasy as an escape, yet we integrate in who we are. Because even the most escapist fantasy out there relies on that human touch. And it's like, the, the themes and messages of this film are definitely the biggest highlight, the biggest plus, even more so than the music and everything, more so than the puppetry. The themes and messages are what make this film like really stand out and I can see the appeal of this again it's not perfect it's not the best movie I've ever seen by any means not of th this year or any year like even for an 80s film even for an 80s children film I would not call this the best I've seen But it was still very good. It was still very enjoyable. It had its issues, but its positives, honestly, in my opinion, outweighed them. It didn't dissolve them, it didn't get rid of them, but it outweighed them. And the positives made this a very enjoyable and emotional and personal experience. And I think that's the point. To connect with people. And I think it really succeeded in that, so. Tell me, though, in the comments below, what did you think of this film? And thank you to me for choosing to react to this. <laughs> because no one else chose it as a donation reward, and that still makes me sad. Um, but no, no, no. Again, you can choose anything you want as a donation reward. No harm in that. Uh, choose what you want. I've seen lots of amazing movies through that. Um, and again, we'll probably get to another donation reward by the end of the week. Um, I can't promise that for sure. Um, because there's a lot of factors that would go into that, but we might. So... It's possible we'll have a third movie this week. That's all I'm saying. We'll see, though. We'll see. Either way, like I said, tell me your thoughts down below, and thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See you all next time.